In this video, we are going to review the three main measures of center. In fact, these are going to be three of the very common measures of centers you will use for a statistic or a parameter to basically generalize, generalize a, a small subset of the data or the entire set of data. So let's look at one of them called the mode. The mode has been probably used before when you look at a menu and you see pi a la mode. And pie a la mode means you get ice cream with the pie. Uh, if it's cheap place, you'll get whipped cream. So mode doesn't mean ice cream. Mode means, if we're going to go French, it's in the fashion. Now, instead of just using the French in the fashion, I think the best way you could just think of it as most popular. So that's what the mode is. It's the most popular number. Now, when we have a mode, that means you have a duplicate or the most duplicates. So if we have the number set one, two, three, four, five, five, the double fives means that the mode is five. Now, if you're feeling like, well, what if there's a tie? Like one, one, two, three, four, five, five, then that list of, or that set of data is bimodal, which means there's two modes. And if there's no duplicates, like let's say the set of data was one, two, three, four, five, then that is no mode. We don't consider a data set of single numbers to be considered multimodal, where uh, the mode is everything. You can have multimodal, such as if you have the data set one, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, and then five, your multi-modes are one, two, three, and four. Now, if you have a slight plurality, and we should probably talk about what a plurality is, it's a most that's not a majority. A lot of times, people get the words plurality and majority confused for the same thing. A majority means you have more than 50%. So if we have the data set 11122, two, there are more ones than twos, so one is the mode. And also, since there are three out of five numbers that are ones, that is a majority. But a plurality means you have, let's say, 111 and then 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 10. There were two tens and three ones. There was a slight plurality of ones. Well, if you have a slight plurality, then that's the mode. Even though our data set went from 1 to 10, and there were three 1s and two 10s, a very slight plurality still makes it the mode. Now let's look at the mean or the average. Now, this is probably the one you've done the most of. To look at the mean or average, it's the sum, and then we have a Greek letter for that, sigma, the sum of a number set divided by the count, and the count is that number n. So you take your data sum and then divide it by n, and that gives you the average. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at some symbolic notation for this. The formula is our sum divided by n, and it's technically the sum of all the elements of n, and I could sneak in some set notation here if I was being real fancy, but for the like, this is something you probably knew how to do before I threw a math symbol at you. If we take the average of a small sample, we give it a little x bar, and the bar tells us that this is for a small sample. But what if we have a population average that becomes our parameter? That special population average, which is now the parameter, gets the Greek letter mu. Okay, so it starts off down, stroke, and then moves up, a u, and then curls at the end. This is the symbol 
pronounced M-Y-O-O, mu. All right, this is the Greek letter mu, and this is used when we have the average of the entire population. But nine times out of 10, when you create it, you're gonna be creating this X bar. So let's take a look at finding the mean, the median, and the mode for the following data set. Now let's remind ourselves from a previous video about the median. The median is the middle. And we spent a lot of time in the previous video finding the middle of data points. The mode is another way of saying most, and the mean is an average. So let's find the mean this way, by taking all this data, adding them up, then dividing by the total number of data points we have here. It probably helps to know how many data points we have. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So we have 11 data points. So the average is going to be going 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 2 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4 all divided by 11. You would get a total there, and that total is 30. And then you divide the 30 by 11, and you get an answer on your calculator. Now let's actually show you that. If I had my calculator, and I went 30 divided by 11, this would give me the answer 2.727272. So if I was going to round this to two decimals, I would get 2.73. Now, there is a warning about this. The warning is if you decided to do this all at once on a graphing calculator. So the warning is this. Let's say I go to my calculator and I go 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 2 plus 2. So far, so good, right? Plus 3 plus... Now I'm going to do four or five times. One, two, three, four. So now I've got one plus two plus three plus four plus four plus four plus four. And then I divide it by 11. Now see what's disastrous about this answer, which is 26.36, is that this answer is bigger than my data set. My highest data point is four. So what actually went wrong? Well, what went wrong is if I type it all in like that and I go one plus one plus dot 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 all the way to plus four plus four divided by 11, this is the only number that gets divided by 11. So please try not to do this. This is a simple mistake. When you type in all your numbers, you get a total and then divide by your sample size. Or sorry, yeah, your sample size there. Now. This was kind of a long way to do it. Another way to do it is to do some bundling by frequency. If you'll notice that we did have a data point that was a one and you had three of them. And then we're gonna have a two and you only had two of those. And you only had one three. And you'll notice that I have parentheses with this. And then I have four and five of those. So essentially what I can use on the calculator is I can use these parentheses keys to say I have one and three of them, plus two and two of those, plus three, oops, sorry, plus three and one of those, and finally plus four and five of these. And that will give me the total of 30. It's a lot easier than ty typing in the individual data points and this is especially important if I give you a chart that has the frequency of the numbers rather than all the numbers written out. So this would be 30, and then divide this by 11, which gives you your 2.73. Now, finding the median is very easy. You're just gonna go from the left side to the right side, and notice that if I go five in the middle, my median is exactly three. Now my mode would be the most common number, so my mode is four. This gets us to the end of the video where we talk about the pros and the cons of each of these techniques here. Now this is usually in class where I put a smiley face and a frowny face. Now, here's what's great about the average, 
or mean. All the numbers are included. Nobody's left out. So if you have a number that's really high or really low, we don't get to throw them out. They're just included in the average. But the problem with an average is that the average is affected by outliers. And we computed outliers before. So if we have outliers, sometimes people adjust their averages based on these outliers. If it's a statistical outlier, sometimes they will actually find a new average without them. Now the median is resistant to outliers. Which means that if I have the numbers like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 60, that 60 doesn't really affect the median because it could be 60, 600, 6,000. Now, if I added another outlier, sure, the median would move slightly in that data set, but the median is resistant to those outliers. A problem with the median is also that no one might be the median. No one might be the median. That is an issue. Because the idea of the median is half the people are below, above and half the people are below a certain number. So one obvious situation is to, what if you have a class where half the students get an F and half the students get an A? Well, then the median is literally a C which is nobody in the class. Another situation would be too that if your median is, let's say you have a bunch of 90s and a bunch of 70s, then the median is an 80, and again, nobody's there. Or if you have just four data points, a two, a two, a five, and a five, the median is between two and five, and nobody is literally there. Now the mode, what's great about the mode, it's simple, the simple, is great and it really works good with categorical data categorical data is kind of like colors like you know if you find out what you know what car color is the most popular and make most of your cars that color cell phones same thing pizza choices can't go wrong with cheese pizza or if you're gonna go with meat pepperoni seems to be the mode for people who like at least one meat topping on their pizza. Now, what's bad about the mode? Oh man, the problem is the slight and oh so slight plurality. P-L-U-R-A-L-I-T-Y. Plurality, P-L-U-R-A-L-I-T-Y. The slight plurality problem is when, let's say, you have 20 small shirts, 20 medium shirts, 20 large shirts, and 23 extra large shirts. Now, extra large is the mode, even though they had a very slight majority on the other shirts. So this ends this video as we had reviewed the three measures of center.